Hi, I'm Tom Grulick. I'm manager of aftermarket services, Jose Caramicron Powder Systems. And I'm here with Luis Aluema from our assembly department. And today we want to show you how to properly mount bearings. And we'll be using a model 3TH rotoshaft and disc assembly for demonstration purposes. So before we get started with the actual installation, we'd like to go over some of the parts that we'll encourage you to have on hand. If you need to have these uh, in stock, we can provide you with a spare parts list. We have a bare rotoshaft and disc assembly that we'll be using to mount the bearings on. We have a end cover, pillow block, end cover for the drive side, and the drive side pillow block. There are differences between the end covers. As you can see, the end cover for the drive side has a taller shoulder, which will actually be used to help clamp the bearing in place. And that is also mated with the bearing housing, which has a shallower bore depth, if you will, so that the bearing, again, is fixed in position. This is why we call this the drive side or held side. And the opposite drive side is also referred to as the free side on the Model 3. OK, so as we get started, Lewis has already installed the inboard flinger. And that will be followed by the end cover and gasket, which you want to have in place before you mount the bearing. You should note that there are two holes in the labyrinth for the uh, oil that gets flung into the labyrinth grooves to drain back into the reservoir. Either one of those two holes should be placed at the bottom of the uh, bore. All right, so what we're doing now is that Lewis has installed the bearing on what we have here is a bearing cone heater. There are other types available. Uh, cone heater is generally the more popular. Induction heaters also work very well, usually quicker. And what we're doing is, because the bearings are mounted with an interference fit, we want to heat the inner race of the bearing so that it will slide on to the bearing journal. And then when it cools, it'll have a clamping effect on the shaft, and we'll be good to go. So the correct temperature is approximately 225, 230. All right, so the buzzer is sounded. The bearing is ready to be mounted. So Lewis is going to take it off, slide it onto the shaft all the way up against the shoulder. And then we're going to put the locking hardware on. Strip my nose. So we're going to check for the tab, and I have one right here. I'll try this one. Just a hair more. All right. And then we're going to poke the tab down. And that's all it takes on the bearing insulation. OK, so Lewis has installed the opposite drive side bearing. And while we're waiting for that to cool so we can install the bearing housing, he'll be installing the pieces on the drive side. First, he had the flinger again, followed by the end cover with the gasket. So the alarm is been, uh, has gone off. So Lewis is now going to install the bearing on the drive side, followed by the hardware. And we'll get that bearing tightened up. And we'll get the lock nut tightened and, and the lock washer tabbed in place. OK, so what Lewis has done now is that he's installed the bearing, the locking washer and the locking nut. He's tightened it to the point where we can get a tab into a slot and put the tab in place so that it 
the locking nut will not back off. So now that the opposite drive side bearing is cooled, Luis will be installing the bearing housing. As you can see, there are definite differences between the two. The opposite drive side in this case has a closed end to cover the shaft, whereas the drive side has the open bore to pass through for the uh, mounting of that pulley. We'll proceed on installing the opposite drive side bearing housing. And he'll be using a brass hammer to just help with the alignment of the outer race into the bore of the housing. Tapping lightly in order to get the outer race aligned. And a lundum hammer can be used as well, but you do not want to impact it hard. You just want to simply get the outer race aligned. Yeah. So now we have to find the hole. So now Lewis is going to align the end cover so that we have the drain holes at the bottom once again and line up the gasket and then do a final closing where we can now install the four bolts that hold the end cover to the bearing housing. And, and then the four bolts will be tightened securely. Okay, so now Luis is going to install the drive side pillar block bearing housing using the same methods that we used on the opposite drive side. Again, he'll be using the brass hammer to tap the outer race in place. Nope. Perfect. All right, and when the housing has been mounted so that we can insert the bolts through the end cover, we'll tighten up the bolts. And then the next thing we want to do is add on the opposite drive side of the outboard flinger and set that. Okay, so now that we have both bearing housing assemblies on the rotoshaft disc assembly, what we're going to do now is go about setting the flingers for demonstration purposes. In reality, you'd want to have the rotor assembly set on the mill body, starting with the drive side first, followed by the opposite drive side, and then what we do is go about setting each flinger independent, checking the rotation, making sure we don't have contact. What we'll do here is that we'll run the flinger all the way in and then back it out at approximately one thirty-second of an inch, snugging each of the two set screws and then tightening each set screw. This prevents the flinger from getting cocked on the shaft and rubbing up against the inside of the labyrinth groove on the pillow block. Mm -hmm. And for demonstration purposes here, we can rotate this easily enough and there's no binding, no contact, so that's good there. Okay, so we've now set the outboard fling on the drive side. We're going to progress now to the inboard fling on the drive side. Following the same rule, slide it all the way in to make sure you have contact. Back it off approximately one thirty-second of an inch. Gently snug the two set screws at 90 degrees apart, followed by tightening of both set screws. And then this process will be repeated on the inboard flinger on the opposite drive side. Okay, so now that we have the bearing housings installed with the bearings and the flinger set, I'd like to just point out that if you do not have the capability or the resources to do this work in-house, we can assist you by having the rotor assemblies sent back to Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems for repair where we'll perform the work for you and then send it back to you in first class condition. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions please feel free to contact us at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems.